Ladies and gentlemen, last year, early this year, we did a statistic there, and it was a research. Causes of separations and marriages in the cases, all the cases we had done. We found out that 39% of them had parental influences. 30%, no, it was 31% from the mother-in-law and 8% from the father-in-law. Parents, where parents begin to supervise the affliction of their children, when, you know, what I don't understand is that the function of a father, firstly, is to protect. <laughs> but they see their daughters in abuse and they don't want to hear. They tell them you cannot come back to this house. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people, you don't have parents, you don't have, you don't have family where you will, you will be in trouble and your brothers and even if they don't have, you see, I tell, I was chairman of a CDA and I was telling my executives, I said, you cannot say you don't have money at the same time you don't have time at the same time you don't have support see some people have money so they can drop their money to help and you know what we want to do some people don't have money they'll say you know what i will come and help you give make myself available to work with you okay what do you need let us go and do it but you cannot have both you don't have the money Yet, you are not even helping making yourself available and then you want to criticize in, on which platform. You say you cannot make yourself available, then you can spread the word. You should be able to do one out of the three, but you cannot be totally useless. A family member, yes, you don't have the money. If you had the money, you'd have rented a flat. Yes, you don't have the money, we know. But are you there? Have you gone there to say, you okay, you know what? This is my house. You, you, I remember <laughs> before I got married. You know how many people were living in my house? I would tell, go, go and bring, what are you talking Go and bring the, the door. I'm not even related to you. In fact, the people that were staying here, we don't even come from the same state. Some, not even the same country. But in their best interest, I would act. It was when, you know, I was getting married that I now sanitized my house. That, okay, you guys, everybody too, should have put something together to, to, to move. But that is the function of family. Anybody that comes against you people surround and beat the external threat to to nonsense but when you're a family <laughs> and you can watch your own blood sibling you know languish in pain in torment in abuse and then you say well there's nothing we can do you know that is her husband that is his wife uh, her wife that is his wife that is her husband then you are not family i want to call this out to people that you know that some of you don't have parents. You are calling the wrong people parents. It is very, you need to be very quick in your head to realize your real situation.
You know what they call self-deceit? Living in denial. When you don't tell yourself the truth of the situation. When you, you know how, what helps me? I quickly tell myself the truth. Help will not come from, this person will not help me. This person is not, will not, you know, and I quickly know that, Olumide, you are suffering. This is, I, you know, it's not, there's a difference between long suffering and to suffer long. A marriage is not the test of your endurance. It's not a test of your affliction. It's not a temptation. Even God said in the Bible, thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. When the, the, he said it in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, when the devil was tempting Christ, the last time he said it is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord. Even God does not like temptation. The last time God was tempted, he destroyed the whole world in a flood. He said, these people have tempted me. And uh, the same thing in the beginning, at the time of Moses. God told Moses to stand aside, that he would destroy, he would kill every Israelite. That is what temptation can do. God will not look at you that come. Uh, because of Abraham, he told God, forgot that and told Moses to stand aside. Let me destroy these people. It was Moses that stood. You don't tempt people. Marriage is not, you don't marry your temptation. Marriage is not a temptation. Marriage is not a test of the level of your endurance. Marriage is not the test of your ability to withstand affliction. It is not cardiovascular endurance. Marriage is to make you better. Marriage is to make you better. When you become worse, there is a problem. When someone who was the life of the Batsi has become the fuse of darkness, I don't understand. But then, somebody gets married and you see their light getting dim. Someone who was laughing, who, uh, who, who uh, you, you, you know, someone who was who was who was awesome or suddenly in the marriage can no longer talk is losing weight becomes so dark and elusive you recognize that this is not the child i gave birth to but you send them and you say i will be praying for you you say you want to increase the corporate prayers. You go and start looking for people, giving them the names and the pictures. You see them in churches, carrying the picture of their children that are they are suffering. What is God going to do? Isn't it man God go, that God is going to use? Is he going to come down from heaven and remove them? That is why he put you here as a parent. He put you there as a parent to do his own job, to protect them. As he is protecting you, you protect them. But you, look at this is the highest level of hypocrisy. You as the parent, you are in church every day going to God for a problem. Whereas your own children cannot come to you in their own time of need. But you are the one that is praying the most. You are the elder in the church. You are the HOD. You are the head of marriage counseling. Oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen, the highest form of anomaly, I've told you, I'm dealing with anomalies. Things that are not within the pattern that was, it was meant to be. A deviation from what is standard and normal and expected. You are expected, a parent is expected to protect their young. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Parents are supervising the crucifixion of their children in an institution called marriage. It is beginning to become madness. It is utmost madness that we would arrest an abuser and the parent of the victim will come to sign a bail bond for the abuser. How is that possible? Somebody was arrested for beating your child. And you will come into the station to sign the bail of the person that beat your own child. Not even looking at your own child. You say, hey, don't worry, it's a family problem. What? It is not a family problem. <laughs> it is somebody's problem. The family did not beat her. One person did. 
they will call it a marital issue. It is not a marital issue. It is somebody's issue. You don't make an issue plural. What is wrong with you is not wrong with me. You might be wearing glasses. I'm not wearing glasses. You say it is a family problem. It's not a family problem. It is your problem. Ladies and gentlemen, our old are supervising the death of the young. Somebody said, what is war? war? Another person defined it. He said, war is when the old men send their children to fight on their behalf. Another said, is when old men receive the corpses of their children. You need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, some of us don't have parents. Some of us don't have family. You need to realize your position. You might not even be going through domestic violence and abuse. In other aspects of your life, you have found out that nobody will stand for you if anything happens to you. You need to go and look for one. You need to go and find one. Those that you know if anything happens to you, they will stand up for you. Those are your parents. Those that have your best interest at heart. That is your parent. Those that will act in your best interest. That. Those people. Yes, those ones. They are your parents. It is abnormal. If you as a parent. It is. Uh, it is I've been dying to say this. But you know, it's like. September just doesn't want to end. Because it is the month for the awareness against domestic violence and abuse it's just i've been holding on to this it's just thank god that saturday is first of october so the topic will change in the station on saturday i will bring people you see this girl whose mother said if she leaves the marriage she will die anyway saturday by god's grace ladies and gentlemen the first anomaly in marriages and relationships parents before you go forward you need to know who your parent is is it the one who is interested in the institution of marriage or the one who is interested in your safety those are the ones that will keep telling you ah your friends are married you are not married uh, what is wrong now mm, your sister is married you'll be pushing because as if marriage comes with an increase in salary or a po political position. As if marriage comes with an instant ticket to whether heaven will be determined by your marital status. Uh, it is, it is, well, um, we have about six more minutes. Let me start going through your messages. Maybe this will be a good time to, to talk. Ike Carroll, Barrister, thank you so much for this uh, for this session. Oh, please, I'm hoping this session is recorded and will be on my page. Yes, most definitely. It, would, it is being recorded and will be on my page. Um, Kabiru Officials, he sent a request to be on my live video. Oh, wow. Sorry. Um, Olushegun347. Good evening, Sir Barrister. Good evening, Mr. Olushegun. Uyosa, lively. Thank you very much, Uyosa. Good evening. Wow, this is a phone number. This is new. I didn't know we could just come as phone. Okay, just numbers. No problem. Uh, who? Okay, Caris 4G. We should not die in our mistakes. <laughs> Believe it. Wole Wole Obiri, no need. Oh, yes, sir. The text on your phone mirror is inverted. Yes, yeah, sorry. I, I realized, you know, facing each other, the right becomes your left. Yes, I'm sorry. I trust my late father, that is Caris 4G. No man born of a woman who might treat his daughter. Please. Uh, he's late. The good ones, they go early. Those ones that are principalities, they like just want to live forever. Wole Wole Obere, no, I am Lord Shegmon. No, the text is mirrored. Oh, it's upside down. Okay, we are talking. Caris 4G, dear God. Hmm. Let me see. It seems people were doing more of this thing today. I'm Lord. Things they happen inside life. I'm Lord Shagun. Yes, yeah, so. 
Uh, it's uh, Lady UD, good evening. Oh, okay, so I've gone. Ochoa Tom, my parents said I should come back to meet him. <laughs> uh, the co parent to oh, Antonia Jai. Mm. I, Carol, it's important I send this across. Wow. Oh, okay, okay, comments are coming here. Yeah. Let me see. Definitely, sir. Many thanks as usual. Kabiru official, sir. What's the difference between long <laughs> Hey, what is the difference between long suffering and to suffer long? Okay. Long suffering is uh, a relic of scripture, of the Bible, where your patience is supposed to endure suffering. The suffering then is in terms of what they don't know is in terms of suffering for the name of Christ. That is when you are persecuted for Christ. That is what the long suffering of scripture is to suffer for Christ. But now to suffer long, this one now has nothing to do with your religion. It has to do with affliction, general affliction. So when you go they say love is long suffering they don't know that the suffering there is uh, suffering in christianity and not uh, afflicted and beaten and domestic violence and abuse there are two different kinds of suffering one is suffering in the name of your religion the other is suffering for your mistakes your gullible ignorance your Whatever. Let me. Damian Dibe. Oh, God. Let me. Uh, Damian, uh, good barrister. Just get enough work. I joined halfway. Oh, Damian, thank you. Uh, that lady whose mother is using emotional blackmail is very bad, and her siblings are also a huge disappointment. It's not even a huge. The siblings are the meaning of disappointment, not that they're a huge disappointment. The definition of disappointment should bear their son name. Ike Carol, it's important I send this across. I know people who need to hear this. God bless you, sir. I'm an ardent follower on Saturdays. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. A yeah, blessing to all. Thank you very much. In such kind words. Willy Willy Obiori, thank you for yet another episode of Deep Thinking to Making the Rightful Decision. Thank you very much, ma. Ochoa Tom and my mom knew he was raping our daughter. Are you serious? Your mom knew he was raping your daughter and he says you should go back to him. Mm. Ochoa Tom, they said you used Omo to wash her bum bum. <laughs> Holy, holy, bring glad for making the right decisions and helping whoever cares to make the right decision. God bless you, barristers. Thank you very much. Organics by Sapphire. <laughs> Organics, you came when they're doing sharing the grace. So. so, thank you very much, everyone, for joining me again uh, Thursdays and just before you say I do. Uh, tomorrow, we would be uh, going to Gloryland uh, International School in Agudasu Lere with the awareness program. You know, we have the awareness against domestic violence and abuse program for secondary schools. So I will be there but from like 12 o'clock in Agudasu Lere teaching secondary schools from GSS 1 to SS 3 about domestic violence and abuse uh, so that they can identify some of our children are raised in abusive homes and the issue is that they will grow up to become the home that they were raised they will grow up to become the abuse uh, the abuser so now we need to teach them so that they can understand that abuse is wrong number one number two they can identify abuse because abuse is not just hitting, uh, domestic violence, uh, beating, and no, there's the emotional abuse, there's the psychological abuse, there's the financial abuse, there's the physical abuse, there's the cultural abuse, uh, there are about six of them, so that they can identify, and then they know the laws 
to protect them because believe it or not there are laws to protect both man both woman both child so you know where to go to we'll be there in Suleri tomorrow by god's grace myself and some of our volunteers we have a, a next week I, I think we have two other schools next week uh, now almost every week we would be going to schools all around lagos state to spread the awareness you know, because our children cannot repeat the same mistakes we made we have to stop this generational curse it's it's a curse because it keeps happening we don't teach them we don't show them that it is wrong but we tell them to be quiet that is why i dealt with the fallacy of silence uh, thank you very much